morning, Magic fans. We have a panel now that is very interesting. I've got a secret lair, and there's no one better to host this panel than the only one, Arles. Come here on stage and take it up for Arles. Yay! Woo! The stage is yours. yours. Hello and welcome to I've Got a Secret Lair. My name is Harless Snyder and I'm one of the hosts of the Magic Story podcast. And while I absolutely love Magic Story, I'm here to talk to you about another one of my loves of magic, Secret Lair. Secret Lair is a place where we get to innovate on art, treatments, frames, and challenge the very notion of what a magic card can be. So without further ado, let me bring out my first guest, Emily Floyd, the Senior Business Manager for Secret Lair. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Harless. Hi, Emily. Hello. So the first thing I want to know yes. is what is your Secret Lair origin story? How did oh. you come into this? I love this question. Um, Secret Lair, my Secret Lair origin story, so Secret Lair, um, originated around 2019 and at the time it was on my radar as like a, oh that seems like a cool new thing that's coming to magic right but to be honest it, it wasn't until the pride drop um, of last year the the Pride Month drop that we did to benefit the Trevor Project. Um, I don't know if anyone else here was a fan of the Pride drop from last year. Anyone? Thank you. Absolutely amazing drop. But for me, as someone who was a little disconnected from the magic community at the time, when this drop came out, I had this absolutely overwhelming feeling of, oh my god, like, I am in magic, like my, my community, myself as a human, represented in these amazing magic cards with this beautiful art, um, getting to see such a playful take through the drop with cards like Bearscape, like it was just the most authentic and connecting moment for me to really see myself in the game for the first time and that's when I was like, I need to be paying closer attention to this secret layer thing. Um, so it was my first secret layer that I bought for myself, and it just so happened that the job for senior business manager of secret layer was open around the same time. And uh, I really just had this amazing journey of finding the pride, super, uh, the pride drop, purchasing it, interviewing for this job, getting the job, and I have to say, like, in the in-between, there was a moment where I was like, this drop is going to arrive, and it will either be so celebratory, or I will be so bummed out if I didn't get the job, and then the <laughs> drop arrives. Um, but I got the job, and then I was congratulated in the mail with the arrival of the Pride Drop, um, which is now my most cherished secret layer of all time, because to me it represents so much more than just magic cards. It's, it's the first magic cards I bought for myself um, enthusiastically. It's the first time I saw myself in the game of magic as a queer person. It's the first time that I got connected to the amazing community that is Secret Layer, And uh, it was for a good cause. And it's just everything about that drop. It forever will represent to me how amazing Secret Layer can be all in one beautiful, shiny holographic package. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Yeah. What is your origin story, Harless? I must know your Secret Layer origin story. Yeah. So um, I had what I will call, I didn't have a casual love affair with Secret Layer. It was a whirlwind romance because <laughs> I bought so many Secret Layers when I first found it because I thought it was so amazing and so unique that I can't even tell you what my first one was because it wasn't a first one. It was a first 10. Ah. And now <laughs> um, I had to build a second set of shelves in my office to hold all of my Secret Layers because I like to keep them displayed. On behalf of the business of Secret Layer, thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Emily, tell us, what does a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so um, to give you an idea, as Senior Business Manager of Secret Layer, it's a title that can sound kind of stuffy, and I will admit that I am not, um, I'm not directly involved in things like the selection of the art or the cards, which I know tends to be a lot of the things folks have questions about, and do not worry, we have amazing people coming on stage that are going to talk about, a lot about that in just a minute. But for me, on the business side, I still have the immense fortune of getting to work across so many different 
uh, departments within the Magic Studio and working with so many amazing people across the Magic Studio. So one of the coolest parts about my job is even though it sounds like a very formal, stuffy job, no day is the same. Uh, on any given day, I am working with the folks that are are deciding the art or the text for the cards. I'm working with the marketing team to figure out what is the next uh, fun thing that we want to do to really surprise people with what's coming up for Secret Lair. Uh, I'm working with you know, sales and finance folks in the studio and um, with our partners at Hasbro to figure out how does this connect to the overall business. And Secret Layer itself gets to change constantly. Like one of the main pillars of how the Secret Layer brand works is we want to constantly be providing an avenue for expression and an avenue for experimentation. We are constantly keeping you on your toes about what a magic card can be. And so, that gets to be reflected in the business as well. Um, I don't want any super drop to be exactly like the super drop that came before it. So we're always working to figure out what's something weird or different that we can do with the next sale. What's a way that we can give the Secret Layer fans a new way to engage with Secret Layer? Where can people find Secret Layer that they've never found it before? Um, it's a constant challenge, but that's exciting. It means that every day I get to work with amazing people at the Magic Studio, amazing people outside of the studio as well to figure out what's the next weird, fun, interesting thing that we're going to do to just keep Secret Layer growing and moving and changing. So for something like the Super Drop, which yeah. is the Summer Super Drop, which is happening right now. Right now. It is like, right, like you can go <laughs> on your phone and <laughs> buy stuff from the Summer Super Drop right now. So how does something like that come together? How does that work from a business perspective? Yeah, so the Summer Super Drop is, has so much awesome stuff in it, right? Like, we'll talk more about some of the cards in it in a little bit. You've got, you get a little glimpse right here. Like, you've got the beautiful Bakshi Drop, a collaboration with our partners at Lord of the Rings, uh, Middle Earth. We've got amazing Goblin and Squablin Drop that's got the beautiful uh, experimental rainbow foil treatment, and that treatment just really makes those colors pop. You've got so much exciting stuff in this super drop, but because we're in the middle of the year, because of um, basically where this super drop falls in the calendar, we had the opportunity to experiment with, like I said, changing things up a little bit for how we run the super drop. So. Some of the things that we are trying in the Super Drop um, that we have not done before uh, include, we were able to lower the free shipping threshold. So traditionally, um, if you were purchasing around the $100 mark, the shipping would be free. And this time we lowered it to the $75 mark just to give folks more opportunity to maybe get, um, save a little money on their secret layer purchase, um, load up on some cards and have them show up at your door for free. Um, and also we were experimenting with um, just different things that we could do to give Secret Lair fans something new. So this time we've got a promotion running where if you spend about $200, you get uh, two free collector boosters, uh, Brothers War collector boosters, which has been fun because we've done similar things um, in the past with things like uh, promo cards last December. But this time, it's kind of a chance to give fans who are purchasing secret, secret layers um, a little connection to main magic as well. Secret layer is unique in that it is so different from what's happening in main magic, but ultimately we are all one studio and we're all part of the amazing game of Magic the Gathering. Um, so this has kind of a, been a fun thing to do to you know, give folks something new and different when they're buying their secret layers and kind of tie it all back together to the main brand as well. It's awesome. Yeah. All right, what is your absolute favorite part of being on the Secret Lair team? Um, uh, there's so many amazing things. I, I have to pinch myself every day because um, working in the Wizards uh, offices, it's a dream come true. I mean, like some of you might imagine, I'm a longtime nerd, a longtime gamer. Um, finding myself showing up in the office where the Wizards of the Coast logo on that big building, it's, it's like, it had it'd been my dream for years. And getting to be on the team, you might think it's a big studio, um, it's, it might be, feel kind of corporate, like that's kind of what I expected going into my job at Wizards for the first time. But the humans that I work with, are so phenomenal. Everyone in the studio is supportive and we're all 
very much into and passionate about the stuff that we're doing. Um, we like we play so much magic in the studio because we are actively engaging with the game that we're making, and it's important to us to feel connected to that, um, which I think is is incredibly important. You can't lose sight of what makes magic magic. And the people that make Secret Layer, the people in the studio that we work with while we're making Secret Layer, have just been the warmest, kindest humans who are so fun to work with, so supportive. I mean, I had to move from New York City to Seattle for this job. And it's it actually just hit my one year anniversary. So I have now been on the Secret Layer team for one full year, which is very exciting. Yay, thank you. congrats. Um, thank you very much. Um, this is my, and my third MagicCon. This is my third time getting to talk to you amazing people about Secret Layer at a MagicCon, which is really fun. What a year it's been. Um, but moving from New York, like packing up my entire life for a job to move to Seattle was one of the scariest, most daunting things I ever did. But I mean, when Wizards says, come work here, you don't say no. <laughs> you pick up the <laughs> move. It was, it was very exciting. Um, and the reason why it's been such a smooth transition and the reason why I feel like I've been set up for success in my job is because the people that I work with have just welcomed me into the team, into the city, um, and into the studio with open arms. So um, I just have to say, like, the magic, the people who make magic, make making magic awesome. It's really amazing. Absolutely. It's incredible to work with so many talented people who are also kind and generous yeah. and passionate and just mm -hmm. so excited. Agreed. All right. Well, thank you so much, Emily. My pleasure. And now I'm going to bring on Tom Jankot and Wizard of Varge to talk a little bit more about some art of Secret Lair. Woo! Okay. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, Wizard of Varge. Hi, guys. Hey guys. All How's right. It going? How's it Good. Going? How are y'all? Good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you the same question I started Emily off with, and I'm going to start with you, Tom. All right. Because I know you've been doing this for a while. What okay. is your secret layer origin story? Uh, oh man, I I love love my job. I I got into the studio right before they released some of the first secret layer jobs from the first seven, a um, uh, few months before that, and so. Early, really early days, we were just trying to figure out what was the path forward, like how far could we push it? And uh, it, it turns out like as, as, as long as we were making things that we loved, uh, it, the fans would also love it, because we're magic fa players too, we're magic fans also. It, it, it was just, it just all worked together, yeah. Absolutely. What would you say your favorite thing about Secret Lair is? It's the, it was the expansion of the, all the art styles, uh, you know. All the art inside Magic is amazing, every bit of it. Um, but to have all these different alternate takes, it, 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 it really was an inclusive like moment to like appeal like to all the different types of art that people like to the stuff that I liked. It was on a Magic card. It was mind blowing to me. Absolutely. Yeah. And same question for you, Wizard of Barge. What is your secret layer origin story? Uh, my origin story is not thinking that my art had a place uh, in Magic, and I was like, that's fine, I'm just going to be a fan, I'm going to be inspired by this stuff, uh, until Secret Layer started and Tom reached out and was like, hey, we want you to do your thing. And uh, I took a little bit for me to understand what that actually looked like in Magic, and uh, once I realized that there's really like no limitations, I figured it out, and now I'm here. <laughs> and we're awesome. so glad that yeah. you're here, by the way. And would you say that the relationship that y'all two have is typical of a relationship between an artist and an art director? I'd say I'd say no. Like we, there's there's certain things with Secret Lair Job is you know, from what you just said, like in the early days, a lot of people were like, "Are you sure this is what you want? Are you sure you want my style?" And it was in a lot of ways. It's so different from a lot of the magic commissions where we, we just kind of get out of the way and yeah. let you be you. It's, it's so important to be you when, you're, when you have such a strong voice. Yeah, I feel yeah. like the artist to art director uh, relationship specifically for Secret Lair is the most, uh, I don't want to say hands-off way, but kind of hands-off where they're like, here's a general direction now you do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Where usually it's a lot more like, this is what we want from you, this is how we want it to be you know, uh, executed, and this is a lot more 
free and flowy. A lot of our notes are to remind the artists to do that as sketches come in. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right. So how has y'all's working relationship developed over time through the many pieces of art that we've done together? Um, how has it developed over time? I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, I think over time, we started with slime, uh, Prime Slime. And uh, we were still figuring out what sneaker layer job was, too. Uh, but this second time around, uh, we, we talked a lot more. Uh, and we, we pivoted uh, quite a bit, actually. From uh, Originally, we started with, uh, with an elves-themed uh, sneaker layer drop. And we were, uh, Dakota Wizard of Bard had sent in the sketches. And, and there was just. There was something that was missing, and it was your authentic self, right? And yeah. I, we started to chat, and we both felt the same thing. Yeah, so we, we started with elves, and I was like, cool, I got this. I love elves. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I started sketching them, and it felt a little off when I was doing it, but I wanted to use that as, like, obviously a challenge. Like, yeah, I didn't want to just, when something got hard, just be like, hey, I actually want to pivot. But... Uh, once I sent stuff into Tom and he kind of reiterated how I felt about it, it was like, okay, cool, there really is something. It's not just me procrastinating in a weird way. Uh, and then we landed on goblins, which clearly is, is my, uh, my forte. <laughs> and uh, I feel like this flowed just instantly. It was, it was a lot more uh, easy. It, it was not a challenge at all. Yeah. And I think y'all actually met at like the relationship kind of began at an art show with you, Wizard of uh, Arts? Yeah, the first time I met a Wizards employee, I believe it was Jessica, was at a, uh, an art show in Portland in 2017. And uh, she came up and was like, hey, I work at Wizards of the Coast, just want to let you know, we all wear your shirts in the office. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's as close as working with uh, Magic as I'll ever get, and I'm fine with that. And uh, yeah, three years later, got the job. Yeah. <laughs> and Dakota, were you a Magic fan before you started working with us? It sounds like yes. Yeah, yeah. I've played uh, for a lot longer than I have made art for it, which yeah. I think makes it harder to make art for it because I, I like, have always held Magic art as this super high thing. It wasn't like, oh, here's an illustration job. It was like, oh, I'm joining this historical mm. fantasy bank of amazing artwork. Mm. That's amazing. And I can confirm uh, your shirts are all over the office oh, yeah. all the time. That's <laughs> awesome. And Tom, what's it been like to see the style overall of Secret Lair evolve over time? You've been working on it for practically since its inception. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, the expansion of like the different art styles inside Secret Lair Drop has been, uh, it's been amazing. Like er, early on, like like I said, we didn't know how far we could we could push it and how far we could different art styles. And so we're tiptoeing early on. And, and to see it expand uh, so far, uh, the, the response from the fans tells tells it all. Like they, it's it's really beloved. Yeah. Blizzard of Barge, you have developed your personal style with us a little bit, but it sounds like you know really being true to who you are is really important for this and, and is really important in bringing out something unique and new for magic, right? Um, how would you say, how do you say you do that? How would you say you develop your own style and you stay true to that? Um, I think it's honestly a uh, lack of knowing the right thing to do <laughs> and making mistakes so long that the mistakes become your style. And uh, so I can really only do what I can do, which I used to be like, oh, I wish I could illustrate like these amazing uh, painters and, and do, you know, like pen ink drawings that are super detailed. But uh, anytime I try to do something like that, it's very obvious that I'm trying to do that and not doing my own thing. When really, I just dive into the mistakes that I naturally draw. And that's the number one thing that when people come up, they're like, oh yeah, this is, this is very you. And I'm like, cool, I can now get away with my mistakes and their <laughs> style. <laughs> And I know that you actually hand drew these pieces, is that correct? Yeah, so these uh, were really unique in the way that we had no border, no like text. I, I didn't have anything to start with. 
which yeah. was a, a, a challenge in its own because it's illustration, but it's also a sense of like graphic design. I'm dealing with text and symbols that I'm like hand drawing everything, but uh, I'm really excited with how they came out. When we started uh, with Elves, we, we weren't in this hand-drawn space where you were drawing yeah. all the text, and, but it was, after chatting with you, it, just, it was perfect. Because a lot, of, a lot of your art does have text in there, and so drawing all of the text and the art and combining it, it's, 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 a, it's a little tougher, but it's, it's perfect for your style. Yeah, I have the only goblin head power toughness uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. the number one thing when he was like, hey, we want everything hand-drawn the very first thing I drew was that. And I was like, could this be a thing? And yeah. they're like, yeah. So I, I got the idea after that. Yeah. It's very cool. It's very unique. And it yeah. really just makes the card kind of pop and feel just different. It feels really special. Thank it's you. fascinating to me how this started out from such a different concept. Mm -hmm. And yet the finished, the final product, it, it's so, it looks like there was no bumps or curves in the road to get there. <laughs> like this, this just came out of your brain and your hand fully formed in the most epic Wizard of Arge goblin way. Like it's incredible. Thank you. Of course. And I'm curious about how these are actually colored. Yeah, so uh, I obviously love bright colors. If you've seen my uh, previous secret layer with slimes or really anything I've done, uh, I don't know how to use dark colors. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted it to feel in the similar world. Like I wanted Muxus to look like he's in the same universe as Goblin Lackey. So I think color is one way to kind of reinforce the consistency of like, this is one world, these are just characters doing their own thing in different areas. And uh, I have a, a very limited but bright color palette. <laughs> Which is just so stunning and really just pops off the card so well. And we talked a little bit about the lettering on the card. That's your handwriting. Is that like your actual handwriting that you wrote out? How did you do that over and over and over and make it all look super <laughs> consistent? <laughs> yeah, so I have bad handwriting unless I go really slow and try. And I have some uh, friends who know how to make fonts. And I was able to take my time doing uh, my handwriting and then send letters to them. And then they actually made a font out of my handwriting that I could use so that it's consistent and readable. So how many times did you go like A, A, A <laughs> before uh, you got it right? <laughs> too many. <laughs> Way too many. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I love so much about Secret Layer is that in each individual drop, there are four to six completely unique cards, and yet these look so consistent together. They all go together. They blend together. They look like they really belong, like you said, in the same universe. So how do you create five unique cards that can stand on their own, can be a unique piece, but also feel in world, feel like they belong, as you said, in the same universe? Well, I also kind of used what each card does as a, because uh, obviously I'm drawing five goblins. Goblins aren't known for looking very individual between each other. They're just little green guys. <laughs> um, but I kind of used the idea or the technicals of the like cards to illustrate it. So for Goblin Lackey, you know, what it does, it's a tiny little goblin, and then when he attacks, there's some giant goblin waiting in the background. And so that's literally what I was like, I'm just gonna draw the wimpiest little goblin in boots and fishnets, uh, which the fishnets was actually, I didn't draw that originally. And then uh, one of the art directors was like, hey, you draw a lot of fishnets on your characters. Yeah. Do you think maybe this would work with, uh, with this card? And it was a note that I had in my mind already, but I was like, I don't know if they would go for that. So I held <laughs> back. And then it was another sign of like, no, just go with your gut. That's what's going to be the best. Yeah, fishnets on the goblin is like yeah. one of my favorite parts about yeah. this drop. I wore fishnets yeah. today in homage uh, to your goblins. <laughs> this is a perfect example of, you know, doing exactly what you want to, right? Like we, when, when that came in, we were like, fishnets. That was the only <laughs> note that we sent back. I'm missing something. Yeah. It literally fishnets. was the only note. was like, yeah. I feel like this should have fishnets. <laughs> uh, very important to the mechanics of the card, the fishnets. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Tom, I actually wanted to ask you the same question. You know, as an art director, how do you make, ensure that these all go together and can stand on their own? Uh, 
that that is part of the behind the scenes job. A lot of times it's setting the artist up for success. That, yeah. That's the biggest part of the art director, especially in Secret Lair job. Um, making sure that, you know, we reiterate, you know, doing your own style, making sure you're true to yourself, but also giving them the tools to not worry about all the bits and pieces and all the, the lead up to that. They can, just, they can just draw the thing. And as it comes in, you know, we watch it and we, we guide them, but that wasn't the case with Dakota. His voice is so strong. The, the vision, the voice was there. So you mentioned earlier that we really pivoted on the concept for this drop. What was new after you, you pivoted? Like, how, what did that open up? Um, well, besides going from the uh, just typical card illustration to a full thing, uh, it was, for some reason, I associated goblins with just, like, mischievous fun, which is what my, like, adolescent brain just goes to. It's like drawing uh, when you're in school and you're just bored and killing time. You're just drawing little characters. And uh, I, you have to find a way to like really have fun with it and not take it serious, especially when you're drawing something <laughs> like as goofy and silly as super bright cartoons that are going on cards that you can play against people. Like I, I just wanted the fun to show through. That's great. Yeah. All right, let's get into the individual cards themselves and talk about each one. All right, so first up is Goblin Lackey, which we already mentioned the amazing fishnets, but can you just take us through the art on this card? Tell us a little bit about it. What do you love the most about it? Yeah, I love that this card, uh, I actually have been wanting this card, but it was kind of expensive. And so when I knew I was going to do it, I was like, oh, now I can like wait until I get my own version. I literally put it in my deck last night. But uh, yeah, so That's besides perfect. getting excited just about the card itself, uh, it was very fun to draw like a kind of a silhouette of just this huge monster with also uh, the dorkiest little goblin running in just to get smashed, probably. <laughs> I love that he looks like he's like really excited for battle. He's got his oh, weapon he's there. All in. He really thinks he's gonna do great, and then yeah. he has no idea what's behind he's it. He's the main <laughs> character in his head. I, <laughs> yeah. I imagine the battle cry very cute. Very yes. Cute. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> all right, and then next up we have. Um, is there anything else you wanted to mention about this card? Great. Um, next up we have Goblin Major, and I love this card so much. It's just such a vibe, like. You just really don't, I don't think I want to go down this alleyway uh, with Goblin yeah. Matron. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Matron is kind of the female, this is how I view it, is she's the female Krinko mob boss. Like she's, she's the boss of her little goblin crew. And uh, so I had to give her, you know, like a little henchman. Every good mob boss has a henchman. And instead of it being like, fancy godfather organized crime. I was like, no, this is a street gang. And they're just hanging out in alleyways. I don't know what she wants, but you know, just hanging by the trash cans, the roaches and the rats. She's wearing sunglasses all the time. <laughs> Very cool sunglasses, I might add. Yeah, and she yeah. spray painted uh, her own title above her. <laughs> nice. Amazing. <Yeah. laughs> she didn't just get so her henchman to do it. Is. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you have to do the dirty work yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And I know we already talked about that, but that power and toughness box is perfect. I yeah. love it. So yeah, good. that was that was the most fun thing uh, of like I kind of already had some ideas if I was ever gonna like make my own hundred percent magic card, and playing with the power toughness was the mm. number one thing I had. Fantastic. Yeah, that power and toughness box is so unique. It just really. It's just so fun. It's fun, I think, is the, the best yeah. word for it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Goblin Recruiter. Yeah, so this is another one where uh, like, I read the text, and obviously he's called a recruiter. And, uh, and I was like, well, goblins, I'm a huge fantasy fan. I love cults. I love wizards. I love warlocks. And I was like, I feel like a recruiter for goblins, he's going to be a kind of cultist of sorts, and he's just... He's cloaked and he's coming up, but he's going to try to trick you into signing a contract, mm -hmm. and then you're recruited. You're there. Yeah, that's, and I, that's clearly where you're going to sign your signature, right? On yeah, yeah, yeah. All, so all if you cards, bring these cards yeah. up, I will. Yeah. So I will happy. sign on the dotted line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the pointy teeth so much. Like they just yeah. are so fun. And then the little bit of 
something <laughs> dribbling out of his yeah. mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is another card where the notes I got back were very uh, limited and made sense. Like, so on Lackey, it was just like, this should be fishnets. And on this one, I think the only note I got was I wrote uh, in English on the, uh, on the scroll, and uh, they were like, well, goblins don't speak English, so like, we need to actually make up the writing. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I got this. I know goblin yeah. writing. <laughs> so I made up my own uh, goblin alphabet. And so far, you... two notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two yeah. Notes, only cards. two notes so far. Yeah. So are you giving people secret messages in your goblin language now? Like, do you just use that as a way to communicate? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's how I'm going to send secret letters. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then next up we have Muxis, Goblin Grandee, and this, <laughs> this little self-important goblin makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, this was my uh, favorite. This is my favorite goblin card, I think, uh, previous to getting this set. Uh, he's so cool, and he does so much cool stuff, and uh, the original artwork is amazing, and I wanted to keep it very similar in, I guess, concept to that, but kind of just pay homage with my own style. There's so much text on this card. And so <laughs> yeah. knowing that you had the, the, the font created, that makes a lot, that makes me much happier. I was, yeah. I was very worried for your hand, for your you know, sanity, writing all of this in there and fi fitting it in there. I should have made one version where I actually wrote everything and you would have seen how terrible <laughs> and unreadable it would be. But yeah, the font saved me on this one because there's a, a lot of text here. But yeah, I uh, don't know if you can zoom in, but I'm very proud of the crowd of goblins mm -hmm. in the background. Their faces get more and more cute as they get further back because I could only do so much detail. <laughs> And I love that he's like just atop a mountain of, of oh, these, yeah. these skulls. <laughs> That's amazing. So was the most challenging, it sounds like the most challenging thing about this card was really the text. And did yeah, that, did that just, change how you framed the card and how you were able to, to put the art on? Yeah, just the format of it. Because when you have no limitations, it's almost more difficult than having a little bit of limitations. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, this is fully up to you. and in my you know like crazy artist brain it's i'm like oh if it succeeds or fails it's all on me i can't be like <laughs> oh that's well you know it doesn't look this way or i don't i don't know it's just it's a lot of pressure but i was very excited to uh be able to like go crazy with this and so far uh i've heard very exciting things from people that's great yes okay and then we have of course shatter gang brothers which, if the colors on this card are just, this is, these yeah. are my favorite colors. It's, it's perfect. Holy cow. Yeah, this was, so Mux, this was actually the second most difficult uh, as far as text because Shatter Gang, I had to draw every mana symbol. He, I mean, he does so many things that my initial sketch, the artwork took up 80% of the card. And then as I started to add the text, it was getting pushed up and up <laughs> and up. So I just started kind of like, shifting things around to where uh, it would fit. And then I drew this very metal title, but yeah. it's still in very cute pink and purple. Yeah. <laughs> the, the brothers here and, and Muxus were, are both legendary creatures. So uh, although we, you know, we say do whatever you want, there are some like, things that we, we ask that, to like, carry over some, some qualities, a weapon or a scar or whatever. And so that, that's just a... We, we, we limit that. We don't ask them to do it exactly, but we want, it, we want a hint of what this known character looks like. And, and to Wizard of Arge did it great. Yeah. Do you remember what some of those things were for this particular one? Not exactly. Just but, their yeah. outfits oh. and uh, kind of that he has some stuff. I still made some changes. I took away one of their eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know if you could see both their eyes uh, in the original card, so maybe it is canon and we don't know. <laughs> but yeah, there's just little tweaks to make where it's like, well, it does need to be recognizably mm -hmm. this character. And sometimes we, sometimes we help out and say, one, two, three, these things and don't worry about the rest. So mm -hmm. and just uh, give some limits instead of make, creating 
ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah, limits breed creativity, right? And so when you take that away, like you said, it, it puts a lot of pressure on you, especially as a Magic fan. You want to you want to do it justice. Yeah. Well, and I I have this this like voice of the original artists in my <laughs> head that I'm like I don't want to let them down. I, I don't want to ruin their card. <laughs> so I'm like I need to make them proud. I don't know if they are or not, but it's the voice in my head that I hear. <laughs> Maybe you're crazy. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I think we actually have some of your sketches that we can walk through now of this drop of <laughs> Goblin and Squablin. So we're starting off here with Muxus. Yeah, this is, so this is what I originally send to art directors. <laughs> as an idea. This drawing is like, it's like two inches in my sketchbook. And I'm like, what if it's like this? <laughs> and, uh, and They've slowly learned to, uh, when I first did my like original set of slimes, I sent them drawings that were this uh, unrefined. And then they were like, I don't know if that it's gonna come out that great. And then I'm like, no, 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 it's gonna get better. This is just like, this is how it starts. And then I, I slowly refine it, but this is literally what I uh, built Muxus off of. And I think it's still pretty good. Crowd of gobs, that's my favorite part Yeah, so of the here's the, after they're like, is it going to be like colored? Is it going to be, you know, maybe drawn a little bit better? <laughs> then I send them a little bit more refined version. <laughs> Obviously, I'm still figuring out like the colors here. Um, but I had figured out the text. I kind of figured out the, uh, the power and toughness. But the title was way different. I wanted it to be like Conan style, like sword through, like old 80s uh, fantasy movie. But uh, it, I kept changing it over and over again until we got over to the final. Oh, also in the second one, I think which the original card, he's on a like throne of gold. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And, uh, and I liked skulls a lot more. <laughs> uh, so I changed it from gold to skulls. I obviously changed the title and uh, kind of just made everything tighter. So that is what starts on the left. So if you're doing a terrible drawing and you're like, this is not gonna become anything good, you just gotta power through and maybe it can become something slightly less bad. One of the things I really enjoy about the art of magic and working on, on so many teams where I get to see different versions of the art is that the sketches from different artists are so very different and there it really shows the trust between the art director and the artist when you have these like rough sketches and then you move down to the next phases and then eventually you get this amazing amazing piece but it's always so incredible to see sketch phase come in yeah the process for all artists is different so once you once you get used to like the, that first time then you know what to expect but it's always like they're going to get there like we'll just we'll just sit back uh, but yeah it's like a group project, right? Like yeah. everybody's going to contribute and it's going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> I went awesome. to a, a, one of the, I guess it was in Philly, the like Art of Magic uh, show and seeing some other artists sketch made me so self-conscious about my sketches. <laughs> They're like, some people's sketches are just so refined and perfect. It looks like the card. And, uh, and I, I just wanted to frame my terrible little drawing and just put it next to it. Like, that one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's special about it, right? Like yeah. it's it's you, it's unique. It's it's yeah. exactly what you what you did. Maybe give some context to, though to the questions of like, but will it be different yeah. <laughs> yeah. from this? That's amazing. Look at that transformation. I also I really appreciate the change from the gold to the skulls. I feel like it really shifts the piece, the the tone of the piece. And you like on, on a throne of gold, is he like a good king? But on the throne of skulls, it's a little it's a little more questionable. Yeah, he is a good king to goblins. Ah. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, wherever <laughs> yeah. you stand on that, good to goblins might be bad to others. <laughs> that's fair. I don't think goblins always have others' best interest at heart. <laughs> yeah. The um, only difference on the, the last one is that we had uh, him shift the mana symbols. Uh, Wizard of Arts has drawn all the mana symbols, and the, the handprint there was just a little further away from, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, like a mountain symbol. So we pushed it. Uh, but yeah, I think that was the note on this one, right? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the only... So we're at the three notes. There were three notes, yeah. Fishnets. Three notes so far. Uh, <laughs> right and Goblin. Yeah. And then my, my mountain symbol is a little, little wonky originally. <laughs> so I had to go back and look, like, how do you draw fire? I don't intuitively, like, know how to draw too many things. I just kind of 
I just do what feels right and then hope that it's recognizable. Mm -hmm. I usually back up enough or ask a friend or my roommate, hey, can you tell what this is? And if they can, <laughs> from a distance, then I'm like, I think it's good. <laughs> Was it intimidating to create mana symbols, your own mana symbols? Yeah, super. Well, I had so much fun on the swamp because I, I have kind of my own way that I draw a skull. I feel like every artist does. And I was like, cool, I get to put my skull as the swamp symbol. Uh, but everything else was super fun. Yeah. That's awesome. And I just I did want to point out that um, you will be signing at your booth this weekend. So everybody, you will have a yes, chance bring to, your goblins. to chat and get yeah. a signature. And you know, you can see if, if Wizard of Barge will sign on the dotted line for you, if he'll sign that contract for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll sign my soul away. I actually, I want to make sure everybody is aware. So this is currently a part of the Summer Super Drop, which is live now. So you can go on the Secret Lair store and purchase it. But for those of you who are here at MagicCon Barcelona, we also have a limited number of these available in the merch store, which is like right there in that beautiful rainbow foil. So you can actually like get it and have it in your hands right now and then walk up to Wizard of Barge and have him sign them, um, which is uh, really exciting, I think. So um, if you weren't aware, I wanted to make sure you know, you can actually go grab these right now. Right now. Um, which I did just before the panel. <laughs> <laughs> if, you build a, if you grab them and you build a goblin deck, I will play my goblins against your goblins, and we can have a goblin party. Amazing. A goblin party with Wizard of Barge? The oh. Yes, please. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> And I think we actually have time for a little bit of Q&A now. Yeah. So if we have anybody who has a question that they would like to ask. Yeah, there's this conspicuous microphone right in the middle. Hi. Where did that come from? <laughs> Hello. 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 Thank you for coming to Barcelona. Thank you. Um, so here's a question for Tom and Emily. So you've mentioned how you know, the secret layer allows you to experiment a lot, to mm -hmm. explore new territory. And with exploration, you know, comes trial and error. So I would like to learn a bit more from you. What has, what have been your learnings? What has worked the most? What has worked the least? What, in your experience, is going to inform you what you do more and less of in, in the future? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I can answer that a bit from the business perspective, although, of course, um, there's some things I have to stay reticent about as we're constantly molding the business, but that being said, we really do, we have this unique opportunity as an online store where we get to directly build the brand, how we're creating the product and how we're selling the product through real-time feedback based on how people interact with the store. So um, in essence, through the store, we, when we run these experiments, we can really monitor like, do people like this? Um, which drops do people seem to you know, engage with the most? What's, what's hitting the most? And the fact of the matter is, not every secret layer is going to be for everyone, and that's on purpose. Like there's always going to, my hope is that there's always gonna be something in the store that you're like, this secret layer is for me, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. But it is not a requirement that every secret layer in the store has to be for you, right? So we get to watch how the fans engage with the secret layer to help make the decisions about what, what are we gonna do next? What's the thing we haven't tried yet? Where do we go from here? Um, I, I, don't, I think that might be maybe more vague than you were looking for, but in short, like when we do these experiments, we are very carefully monitoring like what's working, what do we get inspired by to do more of in the future, mm -hmm. and what sometimes things don't work out. Like sometimes things don't go the way that we planned and um, we have the nice flexibility of the brand to say like, hey, we tried that, we learned from that, let's do something next time that we think is gonna um, hit, hit better with people, that we think people are going to appreciate more or get more excited about. Um, so, you know, I have to say a big thank you to all Secret Layer fans who are always sharing with us your opinions, your thoughts, and also through the Secret Layers that you buy, like what you love, and that really helps us make decisions about what we move forward with. But we're also, we're always gonna keep it weird, so we're always <laughs> gonna be experimenting with things that you've never seen before, and we just don't know how that is gonna go until it's out in the world, you mm -hmm. know? And from the art side, um I think the most of the learnings came early on with like 
figuring out how far we could push something. Like, would, are they going to like this? And we kept trying something, and the answer was generally yes, yes. And so at the end of the day, we, we figured out, well, and I, I, I said this before, that like we're, we're going to make stuff that we love. Yeah. Because we're magic players and hope that everybody else loves it, hope that it finds that audience out there. Um, and so no holds barred. We yeah. decided to go for it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you for your question. Asking. Jinx. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. First off, thanks all for the explanations. They were fantastic. And I want to ask Wizard, uh, specifically, I'm a great fan of yours. I've been following your work for a lot of time, and I really love it. And um, I have to be honest, I, I try to mimic some of your art uh, because I love it so much, just for the sake of having fun and, and, yeah. and trying out things. I, I would like to know how your creative process goes. Like, uh, do you first sort of arrange the palette of colors or do you just go with shapes and forms? And I, I would like to understand a little bit of your process and, and, and your creative thinking behind it. Yeah, so I have kind of come into uh, working with magic a really unconventional way where a lot of artists maybe submit work or they have a big portfolio showing their like variations of, of style. But I'm kind of, I have my one thing that I've kind of specced into and that's kind of all I can do, which seems like maybe it would hinder you, but I think it's been a blessing because then obviously when people reach out to you, they want only what you're doing. So I, sometimes people ask me like, oh, what's your non-Wizard of Barge work look like? And I'm like, I don't have any, it's <laughs> just this. Yeah. But uh, as far as um, process, I start everything in my sketchbook and I just basically do like just fun doodling to find what is exciting in the moment. And I stay watching and absorbing like content from the world that just makes me, uh, I guess inspired. I watch a lot of Muppets. I watch a lot of cartoons. Anything that's like, oh, this world is cool. I just try to keep having fun and not get burnt out. That, that's amazing. And, and for you, Tom, just asking how it is to work with something, uh, someone like him. Uh, yeah, we, we just sitting back and watching. Uh, <laughs> you know, set him up for success early, pivot when we need to. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it's just watching and making sure you know, we can read the text, it's not too small, and asking for fishnets. Uh, <laughs> that is, that's, that's the guidance that we give for Secret Lair Drop in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks yeah. for the direction. Thank you for your question. Thank you. And y'all can feel free to like, line up at the microphone if you want. Just right. So this question is for Emily and Tom. So you both mentioned that you started working with, well, Secret Layers has only been around for a few years, but what were you guys doing prior to Secret Layers? Yeah, um, well, I'm a more recent addition to the team than Tom, so I'll go first. Um, but I, before this, I've, I have a career in the gaming industry in kind of different areas of business development. Um, so before I was at uh, Roll20, uh, an online virtual tabletop in licensing, um, I've worked across, uh, uh, I was director of licensing there, so I basically worked with Wizards of the Coast to bring D&D &D, um, onto the platform and worked with other publishers as well. Before that, I worked in luxury gaming dice. I've kind of worked all across the gaming industry in developing different areas of um, collectibles and of engaging with games in unique ways. Um, I think one of the things that made me so excited to apply for this job in particular is because working in the gaming industry can be very, um, the path can be very niche, right? Like the jobs that I've had across the gaming industry have all been very particular to what I was doing in that role at the time. Um, and it, you get into this place where you're like, this is so weird. Like I can't even describe to my parents what I do for a <laughs> living. So like, how am I supposed to, wh where do I go from here? Um, the secret layer position to me was so exciting because it, it's the perfect blend of the business development experience I've had specifically in the gaming industry and with people who are fans of games. Um, and with the digital element from the experience I got with the virtual tabletop, but with the collectibles element of what I got working in luxury gaming dice. So um, I, I just, honestly, when I saw the job posting, I was like, this is 
all of the weird things I've done in the gaming industry um, for a brand that is possibly the most exciting thing I could think I'll ever work for. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I found myself here. Um, I think the, the experience in the gaming industry has been, uh, it feels like my path just built me towards Secret Lair in a really unique way that I'm incredibly grateful for. But yeah, that's, that's how I got here. <laughs> uh, well, I was born in Melrose Park, Illinois, <laughs> too far back. Um, I, I've, uh, this is my 15th year uh, with Wizards of the Coast. Uh, my first job was working on the website. I, I had to uh, create images for the articles, so it was pretty much, it was a grueling pace. It was like one day, read the articles, come up with funny images to add to them, to accent them. Next day they were posted. Uh, but then from there, I moved into the marketing team where I led a team of uh, designers, videographers, writers to create all of the, all of the marketing, all of the advertising and stuff like that. Um, the studio has, has been, like all of that was fun, but this has been so much more fun too, uh, to, to work with artists and uh, just create something from the ground up on the cards, yeah. And I'll add something to that because you both have a background in what you do, but a lot of us that work at Wizards don't, right? And, yeah. and I think that's what's so unique about this industry is you don't have to have a huge background that is so perfectly lined up. Like you were uh, very lucky to have that, but that's not everyone's story, right? Like yeah. I, I've been at Wizards for about three years. Uh, worked in technology before. I was a user experience designer before I, I moved into Wizards, which is very different from what I do now. And I think Wizards is so good about bringing on really good people mm -hmm. and yeah. finding the skills that you need without worrying as much about what that looks like on paper. Yeah. Which is really, I think, amazing because it and creates I, a good, diverse, inclusive group of people. I absolutely agree. And I think what specifically to the Secret Layer team and to the folks that work within Secret Layer. Who we are as humans is so important to the contributions that we bring to the growth of Secret Layer. It goes beyond um, you know, the, our backgrounds, our education, like whatever we brought on our resume. And it's all about our taste and our sensibilities for um, you know, where, where we can experiment or what the next um, thing that we want to explore is. Uh, so I think it's absolutely right that we're really looked at as humans first and like what contributions we bring as humans to the table because not everyone has, you know, five to ten years of experience in the gaming industry. Um, you're absolutely right. So I hope that helps answer your question. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, we got another. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so, so anyone else wants to, I'll yeah. go again if I may. So uh, for Tom, um, you've already spoken a bit to this about how you go about doing your art direction and how you uh, have to keep emphasizing, for example, that you know artists are really free to go very far. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could elaborate a bit more about the do's and don'ts of art direction, according to Tom. <laughs> and uh, I guess with some special you know, like focus on you know, Secret Lair. Uh, sure. Um, so there are very few don'ts. There are, you know, there are, you know, s things that we need to avoid, such as, you know, nudity and guns and things like this that we don't we don't find a place for, in our in our game. Um, and besides that, uh, it's really just uh, I hate to I hate to, s to repeat this. It's about your authentic self, right? Like, um, I d we hire uh, in secret lair jobs. We're 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 looking for the artists that have that strongest voice. Uh, like Dakota here, like Wizard of Barge here. Um, and so when we find those people, those artists with their, that strong voice, it really is um, them doing most of the work. Um, we will we'll do all the, the notes and we'll find the reference images and we'll give them uh, uh, you know, instructions, but, the, but it's really limited. So as an example, if we were working with something that was a little more uh, close to like, uh, like the main house style, like uh, we would, the art descriptions are very lengthy and uh, they're, they're particular. We're, we have a particular idea in mind, showing a story moment, etc. Uh, but when we, when we would take something like that and give it to Wizard of Barge, uh, we reduce it quite a bit. And we say, we use like maybes and stuff like that. Like we say, it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. What do you think? 
I do get a lot of, of maybe, like, maybe it's in this area, maybe it's in a dungeon, maybe it's in a forest. And, uh, and sometimes I come back and I'm like, what about an alleyway with trash cans? <laughs> and they're like, sure, if that's what you're feeling for it. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's, my experience with Secret Lair has super been just double down on your gut feeling. And that's been the best uh, art direction I feel like I've ever gotten. It, well, a lot of times, too, um, artists will come back with a few sketches, a few thumbnails, like, which direction do you like? And uh, the, the best moments for me are when I, I'm looking at three directions and they're all amazing and I say, you pick. And, th and that, is, that delights the artists and they, they just they love it, they put their best work in and uh, yeah, that's, that's a great moment. What about the do's, Tom? What's you that? talked a, lo a little bit about like the the don'ts and uh, is, are there anything is there anything else that's like a hard do? Uh, besides the authentic self, I mean that yeah, yeah. that's at the core of the thing. Um, uh, there are, I mean, the, there's there's some rules about like you know le like legendary creatures yeah. stuff like that, which we which we talked about. Uh, it but has there's to also have some, text, I assume. <laughs> yeah, there's also some leniency there. Like we want, we really want the the voice to come through more than you know being like true to all of the what magic's done before. You know? Yeah. Thank you, Eva. Since I don't know if there's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, just uh, just came up with this because you talked about the text, and I wanted to ask uh, how how important is it to uh, have the 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 right text, right, the, the gatherer version of the text mm. on the card? Because you had the like the mischief secret lair, it had like the swords, two plowshares, and it was mm. a two, right? I think it was that. And uh, how important is that? How 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 far away from that can one stray if? Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, well, first, hi Tim. Hi. From which we met <laughs> yesterday. Um, the the text uh, on the card, you can, you, we we give the text uh, to the artist. Um, so we we work with our we have a whole rules team, a rules managers, and templating, and it'll, and the only thing that we try to do is future proof it. So sometimes the templating changes on magic cards, like they'll change, you know, how different abilities are worded. So we check with them, and we're like. This is coming out, you know, a year from now. What are there templating changes? That's what we do there. But as far as the creative stuff, that might be a better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I was given just a blank template, I really was like, oh, maybe I put the text over here, and maybe I do the art here, and maybe it, so there's really no rules, so you don't know where to go. But I uh, heard people in my head that were very upset at me for totally changing the format of the card that existed or didn't. Uh, so I was like, I want to keep everything, at least when you're looking at it, you know the general area to look for mana symbols, or this mm -hmm. is the title of the card, this is the text. So I didn't want to change it too much just based off of, I guess also personal preference, like actually playing and knowing what would I like. I wouldn't want to look at a card and be like really confused by where everything is. Mm -hmm. But I also love some of the cards that have fully deconstructed the format too. That's a great note. Early on, we started with you know, a set of rules, especially when we got into these fully hand-drawn cards where we'd say, we need to keep the mana symbol up top right and the, t the card title up top. And, but we loosened that quite a bit as we, as we went on. And, uh, uh, you, know, it's, you know, if you know the card, like you know all the bits and pieces, and so having some freedom to push that around uh, is, is important to, to sometimes the art, the end, the end result, yeah. When I was a designer, one of my mottos was follow patterns, but take risks. Follow patterns as yeah. in people expect to look for things in certain places, and that's very helpful to understand something, but take risks with it, right? Be able to, to push it a little bit. Maybe writing text in an legible way is a no-no, but you know, <laughs> moving it around and, and maybe moving it outside of just the traditional text box and things like that mm -hmm. is where we really get to, to innovate in that secret layer space, which is really amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we are probably out of time for questions. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, that was um, that was the core thing, right? We don't have anything to show or anything like that. No, I think we're yeah. uh, I think okay. we're all I think we're all done here. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Nothing. Nothing extra. Nothing special? gonna pop up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. 
<laughs> okay, just making sure we don't have anything. Okay, Great. nope, absolutely not. What? Well, that was weird. Huh. That was very strange. Weird. What I was have that? no idea what that was, but now we do have some prints that magically appeared that we will be giving to everyone that came to this panel today. Where did Thank you come guys from? so much for attending. <laughs> Emily and I are going to be on either side of the stage to hand these out. Thank you so much for joining. I've got a secret lair. Have an awesome day. Thanks, everyone. Have a Thank magical you. day. Thank you. Great job.